Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to this Loopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. It's a new tradition. It's a good tradition. If I can get my finger. Oh, I can't get my finger. In. Okay, there we go. Oh, it turned. Phrasing. Oh, my phrasing. God. Well, now, hey, don't don't be phrasing this early in the podcast now. <laughs> all right. But we're we're going to waste no time here. We've got a lot, a lot to talk about. We have arguably the toughest regular season game for Ohio State right here, right here, this, this week. Ohio State heading on over to Eugene, Oregon to take on those Ducks. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're going right into it, aren't we? Should, yeah. I, should I just should I just should I just pull the thing up? Just pull the thing up. Pull the thing up. Here we go. Here we go. Eugene, Oregon, seven thirty. Kyle, first question for you: Are yes. you worried about the travel? Um, the here's travel? A, no. here, here's the thing. I'm going to bring up. Um, I'm not going to bring it up a lot in this episode, but if when, if you stick around for the Friday episode where we do our sloop picks, we pick six additional games against the spread. Always be plugging, plugging the Friday show. Um, I'm going to bring this up a few times during that show. Big 10 teams, whether it be one of the four West Coast teams traveling east or one of the traditional eastern teams traveling to the four new teams out west are currently one and seven against the spread. That being said, said, yeah, that being said, the favorite has won in every single game. So there except except USC losing to Minnesota. So there's also an exception. Each one has an exception. Mm -hmm. So the favorites winning but they're winning by less than expected with a very small sample size acknowledged. Acknowledged is a small sample size. But when West goes East or East goes West, favorites are still winning, but not covering the spread most of the time, like a high majority of the time. Now, Ohio State's only favored by three and a half points, so it doesn't leave a lot of room to play with in it's regards to... Remember, I- at the start of the year, Oregon, Oregon was favorite here mm-hmm. preseason here. So it's it's jumped at least like five points. Hold on, in I think Ohio I can favor here. I think I can actually. Why don't you talk about some Oregon players? I, mean, I think sure. I can actually find those. Uh, yeah, sure. I mean that movement. It, I mean we're also start then the then the quarterback of uh, the Oklahoma Sooner transfer Gabriel, who's. Um, Accurate. I'll, I'll just say very, very accurate. What's what's his? Um, he, he's got to be seventy-seven point uh, eight. Seventy-seven point eight. Very, very accurate. Accurate uh, quarterback here. For oh, about fourteen, fifty yards, thirty or eleven touchdowns, and three interceptions for the year. Uh, do note that two of those interceptions did come against Sparty recently. Uh, and he and he's. And he can he could make some some runs too. He's already he already has three rushing touchdowns for the year too. So definitely something Ohio State has to keep an eye out on the defensive side there. Um, By the way, support the first the first date marked on on this line movement that I have had Oregon favored by one and a half in July. Um, but on the what would this be? Uh, September 7th, it swung in Ohio State's favor where they were favored by one. Uh, then on the 9th, Oregon was favored by one again. Then on the 10th, it went back to Ohio State by one. It's jumped around a little bit since then, but it has mostly been favoring Ohio State generally in that direction. Uh, so yeah, off, offense revolves around Gabriel. Gabriel is a very, very accurate quarterback, as we just mentioned here. Uh, throwing to targets such as Taz Johnson, who has the most receptions by far. 43 receptions already in five games. Yeah, uh, and that, that dwarfs his, that dwarfs the next guy. Else. 
Treshawn Holden's the second most receptions at 19. Yeah, yeah. More yeah, than double. Evan Stu- and Evan Stewart has uh, 16, and their tight end Terrence Ferguson has 16 as well, too. So, yeah, uh, spreading the ball around, but definitely heavily, heavily favoring uh, Ted Johnson, though. Uh, yeah, Tez Johnson, uh, uh, far and away the the favorite target of of Dylan Gabriel. Yeah, I'm just pulling up of his game logs here. So recent recent games against Sparty, he had 10 receptions, 84 yards. Against UCLA, he had 11 for 121 yards. Against Oregon State, he had seven for 110. Yeah, yeah, but about 30, about 30. 30 um, catches receptions in the last three games here. Does, Ches- does Tez Johnson get followed by our fastest corner the whole game? I don't know if it's fastest. Uh, I would still completely say that Burke is CB1. So I think the question is, does Burke follow him the entire game? Yeah. And I don't know the answer to that question. To be honest with you, um, I... F- I feel like Ohio State has left a lot of its defense in its back pocket in anticipation for this game. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at you're looking at his average receptions, not even ten right now. So he's getting those just short passes. So you want someone who can cover him, cover him up close here. He's not going to really That's true. burn you deep. He's not going to really burn you deep. His longest reception is 52 yards against UCLA, but. His longest was 17 against um, uh, Michigan State. He had, his longest was 19 against Idaho, 27 against Oregon State. Not going to really beat you deep compared to Ohio State players like Abuka and uh, Jeremiah Smith. So you want somebody who's going to be able to get on him and cover him because he's going to he's going to do those uh, short routes to get those. Um, um, first down catches or make it really short to, to pick up those easy first downs as well. Uh, the running, running backs, uh, Jordan James is our RB one. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty impressive so far here. 88 rushes for 552 yards. So, uh, I can do math real quick. 6.3. Uh, six, six, oh, about 6.3 per, per rush. Really good. Very, very good. So, uh, Pretty pretty balanced um, overall. Uh, they they are rushing, they're rushing for about 165 yards, passing for 295. Um, so getting it done both on the ground and in the air. But yeah, um, offensively, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be it's going to it's going to be the toughest challenge offensive or the toughest challenge for Ohio State's defense this year. Yeah, and it, and it needs to be said that this is. I mean, you see all of these impressive offensive stats. So the question, if you're a smart football fan, or maybe it's not even a question, maybe you just already know it. If you're a smart football fan, yeah, their offensive line's damn good. Maybe the best in the country, among the best in the country. Um, Being led by two all-star offensive tackles, um, Cornelius and uh, Connerly, and a um, incredibly impressive center with a Name I'm not going to try to pronounce. Quite frankly, just not even going to do it. Yeah, they they, they started um, they started off really rough though. The offensive line started really rough, letting up seven sacks in the first two games. But since then, none zero, since though zero none sacks. since then, none none in the past three games here. So they've 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 got it figured out. Uh, so definitely going to be a big challenge for this Ohio State front seven, front six, six and a half, whatever you want to call it, to try to get the try to get that pressure on to Gabriel because he's, he's that kind of quarterback. You, you got to get in his face or see if you give him time, those receivers like as Johnson and Holden and Stewart, even their tight end Ferguson, but, but mostly is, Tez go, Johnson. is going to get open. What's that? But, but mostly Tez Johnson, mostly Tez Johnson, but they, um, they, they got play They got playmakers uh, all over the field there. Smarty was knocking him around a bit. Uh, I saw Dylan Gabriel got popped against Sparty. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, you're almost, almost, 
that, that that's a dual edged sword because the Ohio State staff can look to what Michigan State did and see if they can replicate it at the same time. Oregon obviously saw what happened and they can try to fix the problems that they had. Um, so it's always, you know, the cat and mouse game of. I mean, fair, fair, but I mean, they they still got the ball to, to Tez a lot. <laughs> they still got the ball a lot too. Yeah, but no offense to Sparty, who has a, a good defense, but if they can get there, we can get there. And if that Fair. means blitzing more often, then that means blitzing more often. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. That's that's just that that is what it is. Uh I wonder. And I'm not going to stand here and pretend like I'm intimately familiar with Oregon's depth chart because I'm not. But I wonder how deep they are. They don't. Jordan James is QB or excuse me, is RB1 period. Um, you know, you have Noah Whittington who has gotten some carries this year, but the per carry drop off is pretty big. He has less than half of the uh, rushes that Jordan James has. So the drop off, at least statistically, I'm not trying to rip on Noah Whittington. I don't I'm not familiar with his game. But statistically speaking, there's a significant drop off. We've already talked about Tez Johnson and how he's dwarfing receptions for everyone else on the team. Again, he has 43 catches. Next closest has 19. Mm -hmm. So it seems like you have three guys. You know, this offense statistically looks like it's three guys. Not from in the skill positions. Obviously, their offensive line is stacked. They have an excellent offensive line. But, you know, it does make you wonder what happens if one of those guys goes down. What happens if Ohio State's able to neutralize one or two of those guys? What happens then? You know, especially if that person's Tez Johnson. Ohio State yep. has an excellent secondary. If they so choose to, they can neutralize Tez Johnson. Now, the question always becomes, you know, what are you opening up? You know, what are you sacrificing to do that? Yeah. Becomes the question. Tight end isn't bad either. I agree. Terrence Ferguson, uh, Kenyon, Shadik, they have two pretty good tight ends. But I'm not I'm not trying to belittle any of the other players. I know that they're talented. Uh Treshawn Holden and Evan Stewart are both incredibly talented, but for whatever reason. Statistically speaking, they seem to really focus on three guys. And one of them's the quarterback. So obviously he's a focus, right? That's that's a given. From a skill position standpoint, it's two guys, Jordan James and Tess Johnson. It's not to say that the other guys can't do it, not to say the other guys are aren't talented by any means, but statistically speaking, it's a three man show. Yeah. Uh, Stewart has not been the same level he was at AM, which is so revealing. I was scared of him when he transferred. It's weird. And, you know, following the NFL for as long as I have. It's really weird because common sense is if player really good here, I can pick him up, put him over here and player should be really good here. But it's actually crazy how often that turns out not to be true. Yep. Um, yep. defensively. Yep. Uh, it's it, Jordan Birch. I mean, you, you yeah. gotta start off with Jordan Birch, such a monster, such a monster on that, on that, uh, defensive end there. And opposite this, this him. Is, this, this, this is the guy that I worry, worry the most here on the, honestly, on both sides is, is probably Jordan Birch. Like he, he can be the difference maker in, and for Ohio State to make anything happen, we, we talked about in preseason that we were worried about the Ohio State's offensive line. And so far, the offensive line has done pretty good. But 
have not come up to anybody close to the level of Jordan Birch so far this year. Uh, I'll say already has already has already has five sacks, five sacks already for the year. Uh, he, he gets he gets his big hands up too as a, as a defensive end. He already has three uh, pass deflections already. He's he is a big big difference maker, and I I really worry about him making a big impact and slowing down Ohio State's offense, getting them off the field earlier than they would want to. Uh, but yeah, you got to really keep an eye out for number one there. He's he is a big big problem for Ohio State's offense. But if you focus on him too much, Mateo Uyunglele is on the opposite side of that defensive line. Um, yes, that is the younger brother of the quarterback. Yes, for those of you who follow Ohio State recruiting, Ohio State was very much involved in that recruitment until the very end. Um, but yeah, like that that that's part of the problem when you play a team that's as good as Oregon is, at least on paper. You know, you can't go all out on Jordan Birch. I mean, that's that's the young is on the other yeah. side and they also have yeah. an incredibly talented trio of linebackers. Um, Tashim Johnson at safety is a is a total difference maker. Uh, Jabbar Muhammad at at cornerback is an outstanding player. This is a great team. There aren't a lot of holes on this defense. Uh, their defensive tackles, Harmon and Caldwell, are both very good players. It is what it is. Uh, they have Brandon Johnson, who's a really good nickel guy. Who are they going to throw at JJ? That's a great question. And that, that's that's the thing that Hasi has going for them is that they got outstanding wide receiver core that if they try to focus too it much on Ibuka, if they try to fo- focus too much on well, that's the Jeremiah, thing. hey, th- th- this could be this could be the the breakout game for like Ennis for Bryson, like you could see maybe more targets going to them because of the focus of them stopping Ibuka and Jeremiah. I could potentially see that. You know, and, and I think we'll probably, I, I don't know this, but I'm going to, I think we're getting Tate back for this game. Um, he was questionable last game. I assume that means he'll be good to go this game, but I don't know. But Ohio State does have plenty of wide receivers queued up if they don't. Yep. Um, statistically speaking, Oregon looks fantastic. Uh, points per game, top 20. Yards per play, top 20. Yards per pass, top 20. Yards per rush and yards per game, they're just outside the top 20. Defensively, they are top 20 in points per game, yards per game, yards per play, and yards per pass. Their weakest statistical category is yards per rush, and they're still only 44th in that. They're still only allowing three point eight in that, and 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 I think that's what about turnovers? Are, that they they are weak off. in the turnover area. Yeah, I, I think I think that's where Ohio State's probably going to have the most success. Is it's going it's going to be on that run game here. Historically, Ohio State's done a really really good job with the run blocking here, and we we've seen that all this year, especially the especially the past couple of games here. Granted, the opponents they play understand, but. They've the offensive line has been playing outstanding. Seth, Seth, the uh, transfer center, playing had had his Miss best Lachlan. game as a Buckeye, yeah. Buckeye uh, last last weekend here. So keep keep that train rolling. If that offensive line can block as well and get these running backs to um, to get to that second level, so that like the first contact is at four or five yards, right. like they're going to wear down the can wear down, wear down Oregon like they have been all year and just third quarter comes around and Ohio State just starts taking over then that's that's my hope to see in this game is Ohio State starts wearing down Oregon 
offensive line getting those blocks, getting the running backs to that second level. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Now, someone brought up turnovers in the chat. I think it was gangland. Um, turnover margin, 97th in the country. They're currently um, down a half of a turnover per game. Time of possession, they're right in the middle. Um, yeah, um, Dylan Gabriel's thrown three interceptions on the year, which isn't which is not terrible. Um, anyway, the past games now. Okay, so we're 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 gassing up Oregon, right? Hmm? On paper, they are fantastic. I'm gonna tell you a maybe top, why a, we should be potential top four potential top four team in the country. They are literally ranked number three right now. Um, yeah. And I'm going to tell you why maybe don't be so afraid of Oregon after we come back from this commercial. Uh, uh, that's what you call a tease. Uh, we're going to do a quick ad break. Uh, before we do that, if you want to avoid these ad breaks, you can go to patreon.thesloopcast.com, become a patron and gain access to the Patreon version of the show, which is ad free. It is ad free. Uh, that's only three dollars a month. That's it. It's literally only three dollars a month. And by the way, his for as long as we've been doing it, has always been three dollars a month. We don't do inflation here at the Sloopcast. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Patreon.thesloopcast.com, uh, Discord.thesloopcast.com, YouTube.theshort the wow lost it. YouTube.thesloopcast.com and a bunch of other links. And if you're just looking for those links, you can just go to thesloopcast.com and find a link. In that link, you'll find all the other links. Good stuff, huh? Here's that ad break now. Kyle, why shouldn't we be? We gave we gave a lot of reasons why we should be afraid of Oregon. Why shouldn't we be afraid of Oregon? Uh, why shouldn't we? Uh, I think we touched base a little bit of this, and that's the uh, that's the wide receiver room. That's the running back room. It's all these playmakers outside there who've done an excellent, excellent job already this year in making plays. Um, We're talking about Ohio State's catches, rooms, make it making one hand catches, stiff arm, stiff arming. Okay. But, but, but we're still talking linebackers about linebackers to the ground there. But we're still talking about Oregon. We're not talking yes. about Ohio State. We're talking about Oregon. Despite okay. everything I've just said, they only beat Idaho by ten points. Okay. They only beat. And that's the. They only beat Boise by three points. They did destroy Oregon State. I'll give you that. They beat UCLA by twenty-one points. But if you paid attention to that game, it wasn't quite so close. And they just beat Michigan State. Not as good as Ohio State just beat UCLA is extremely mid. That is a compliment. That that's an insult to the mid teams. To call UCLA to, mid is an insult to the teams that are actually mid. But to but to counter that, Joe Jared, I, I understand. I understand. I understand we beat Michigan State saying. better than they beat Michigan State, and huh? Michigan State did it going to Oregon. We did huh? it going to East Lansing. And I think that's the game you have to compare this matchup here is that most recent game of Michigan State. Very recent ones. I know you can, Jared said, oh, you beat Idaho by 10 points. Yes, on paper that looks bad, but that's week one. And we looked at the statistics, if I can talk, where Oregon's much improved on the offensive line, letting up seven sacks in the first two games to zero sacks given up the last three games. They got their, I'll just say, they got their shit together. Yeah. And and really, really improved on the uh, on um on the offense there protecting Gabriel. And and we saw like the rushing attack improve there as well, too. So, but yeah, if you want to compare the comparison is definitely Ohio State, Michigan State, and Oregon and Michigan State. And yeah, you look at them. Ohio State, Ohio State definitely on top, both from the final score and the statistics number as well. And that Ohio State did it in East Lansing versus Oregon playing at, at Eugene. 
Yep. Kyle, have we gotten to know Oregon sufficiently? Um, I think so. I think so. Um, any anything else you want to add on, Jared, about this about this game here? Um, I know you meant. I know you mentioned the. I mean, no, you mentioned that uh, the Big Ten teams going going west um, hasn't fav- hasn't done too well against the spread. At, um, against the spread and all that too. So, um, yeah, do you, do, you th- do you think without without spoiling, but do you, do you think that really is going to be an effect? Is that going to be a problem for Ohio State? I'm I. Whatever fear you could get from the statistic that teams aren't doing well against the spread when they travel from the Eastern Big Ten to the Western Big Ten, to me, gets negated, if not totally overwritten, by the fact that the favorite has still won all of those games but one. So yes, against the spread, the away team is one in seven. But the actual game, they're seven and one. USC yeah. traveling to Minnesota being the example on the actual, you know, the, the actual game, not the against the spread game. Gotcha. Yes, Jared's Gophers. Not my Gophers. <laughs> All right, let, let's let's go ahead and jump into it here. Let's get into our predictions here. Uh, Jared, who is our who is our guest speaker this week? Uh, he's not a guest speaker, although he has been a guest speaker in the past. Uh, our guest picker is Austin, who is currently down in the chat. Um, you might remember Austin if you've watched the Sloopcast a lot. He has filled in for Kyle on a couple occasions. Um, Kyle, where are we starting? Well, let's start with our, um, enemy. Well, let's, let's do an order how we always have it. Ohio State player to watch. What do you have for Ohio State's player to watch here? Ohio State's player to watch. I'm going to go with Seth McLaughlin. Um, this is a game that will be decided in the trenches. Ohio State has a greatly improved offensive line. Oregon has a really good defensive line. Oregon has a really improved offensive line. Ohio State has a really good defensive line. This is, this is, a, we are, there are so many skill players in this game. And there are, there mm-hmm. are so many skill players in this game on both sides of the ball. But don't let any of that distract you from the fact that this game will, in fact, be won in the trenches. Win the line, win the game. I I like where your mind's going because I have written down here an offensive lineman as well. Um, I'm not going to go with the center here. I'm going to go, as you all aware of, I kind of like to have a theme going on here, but I'm I'm going with the left tackle, going with Josh Simmons. Yeah. With Josh Simmons as my uh, Ohio State player to watch here. So you can reduce. can I, can I, can, can, from that, can I guess who your Oregon enemy player to watch is going to be? <laughs> uh, we'll get there. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's got to, got to really, really slow down those two um, threats at the defensive end there. And I think, I think Josh Fryer can do a pretty good job, but I definitely really worry about uh, Josh Simmons on the other side there still. And I feel that he can, he can get exposed. He's he's done great recently, great, and I'm really really proud of uh, what I've seen from Josh Simmons so far this year. But like I mentioned before, this is this is a whole new beast that they're going up against here. What the? Who does Austin have? Um, I feel like this player has been picked by one, either Jared or myself or a guest picker every week. So we're we're staying with that trend here, and Austin has picked. Uh, uh, Sonny Styles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he says here, Sonny's been making a lot of tackles this year. He's been making his mark, but I feel like he's been out of position some in coverage. His run game stopped. Stoppage has been elite. 
but I really want to see him get back in his safety days a bit this week and cover those crossing routes. I agree. Uh, I'm predicting a sunny pick six this week. I'm going to electrify. It's going to electrify the fan base. I'll say maybe eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Book it. Yeah, it, we, we talked about this in a number, number of uh, of the Scarlet and Grade episodes uh, where we review the Ohio State game. And it, yeah, those crossing routes, the, the middle of the field has been wide open a, a lot of the time there. And yeah, I I mentioned I hope that the defensive staff gets that locked down because uh, newsflash, Oregon loves or or I should say that Gabriel loves, loves throwing it in the middle. Tez Johnson loves it too. All right, enemy count? player to watch. Enemy player to watch. Uh, and, and yes, Jared, you're right. It's Jordan Birch for me, uh, for the Oregon uh, player to watch here. If, if he can, if he can make his presence known and disrupt this Ohio State uh, offense here, man, it, it's going to be a long day. It's going to be a long day for this Ohio State team. It, it, it means that the it means that the playmakers aren't going to get the the ball as much going to get isn't going to get as many touches and the defense can start getting worn down a little bit more when Oregon's offense is on that has the ball more often too. So that offense got to get on the field and stay on the field a little bit longer, uh, get those drives going and I'll get some points on the board. Who you got Jared? I got Tez Johnson for the reasons you said, Ohio State has been weak with shallow, short passes over the middle. Tez Johnson is he's the exact that we see it happen a few times a season where a wide receiver just rips us up for like eight catches. And, you know, it's not necessarily a ton of yards but it's, but it is like a ton of first downs and it's enough to get you all anxious and pissed off. Um, He feels like that kind of guy. This feels like that kind of game. Um, If Ohio state can prevent that from happening, Oregon's fucked quite frankly. Mm -hmm. If Ohio state can neutralize Tez Johnson and just contain Jordan James. Oregon's done. It's over for Oregon at that point. Austin also also picks Tez Johnson here. Uh, since he averages nine catches a game, very quick, and he is able to get a crossing route on the run, then he is a threat to take it, it to the distance. Ohio State has to be able to keep everything in front of them in the passing game. They can't let Tez get open on a post between the hashes or shallow outside of them. I agree to a certain point. But keeping everything in front of them, that, that's that's where Oregon, uh, that's where Oregon excels at. Like, get the ball quickly to their playmakers, which they have been, and then let them do their thing. And that's what Tez Johnson has done. He catches the ball really short and makes good runs after that too. So, keeping everything in front of them, I'd say to an extent. I'd say to an extent. No, of course you don't want to let them get behind them. Obviously, you don't want that, but we don't want to give them this space in front of them too. We, we've talked about, and even you yourself, Austin, where you're seeing it's third and five, and also they convert he's, because he's just, they kept everything in front. Listen, he's just poking at you like he normally pokes that's, at that's me. That's fine. That's fine. This is entertaining. So <laughs> I hope so. All right, key matchup here. Ohio State's offensive line versus Oregon's defensive ends. Why don't you just why don't you just go full defensive line? No, I'm going to the defensive ends. Hey, I have a, just, I have a lot of faith in Seth. I have a I have a lot of a lot of faith in Seth. I have a lot of faith in Donovan Jackson. It's, it's those two defensive ends that I'm really worried about. Um, all I'm saying, Derek Harmon especially is very good. Caldwell is also very good. 
I understand. Donovan Jackson is very good yeah, as well. <laughs> I understand. I'm just saying, if you're going to go... Fry, and Fry, and Fryer, Fryer's pretty good too, but yeah. It's, in situations. In situations, yeah. When used correctly. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you said... You said Ohio uh, State's. What, what's, what's your key? What's your what's your uh, key matchup, Jerry? Um, Burke. I, I'm 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 not going to go groupings. I'm going to say straight up Burke on Johnson. Enough said. All right, hey, I don't. Let's, I, let's go. I already made my case. Yep. All right. Uh, let's see here. He has Austin. I could go with Styles Johnson, but that feels too easy. I'm going to go with. I'm going to say Tate and Emeka versus the Oregon DBs who aren't uh, Jabbar Muhammad. I think Muhammad is going to be given the Smith assignment. Emeka and Tate can routinely beat the other Oregon DBs who are not nearly as good. I say ha- can have a great day on an O. I, I think Ohio I, State wins the day on the ground, which is not to say I, that they can't win it through the air because they, they can. I I will say here because I I have not looked at any I have not looked at any any of Austin's over unders yet. If Ohio State can get if Ohio State can get over I'll say over 165 rushing yards in this game, Ohio State's going to win. If they can get over 165 on the ground, Ohio State will win this game. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. That tells, that tells me that they've had, they've had, they have success on the ground. They kept going to the ground. They're getting first downs, extending the drives. I think, I think, I think 165 a, will be enough. As a singular stat to put the entire game on. I, I don't agree, but that's okay. We don't have to. Agree. All right. All right. Ne- next, next one here is the, is Group them all in one here is our final score. Um, Ohio State as locked in from the CBS Pickums is Ohio State as a three and a half point favorite here. Uh, I will go ahead and start with Austin's here. Um, he says here, I really think Oregon isn't quite as good as we're expecting them to be at the beginning of the year. Ohio State has impressed me, especially lately. And I am a I am a notable pessimist. The offensive line has been close to dominant, surprisingly, and if they keep that up against Orman and uh, Birch, etc., then I think the Buckeyes will roll. Buckeyes win this one pretty easily. He has the final score: Buckeyes winning in covering thirty-eight to seventeen, a twenty-one point victory. Wow! You know what's really that, wild? That I do not agree with, but. You you want to know what's really wow about that number to me? It's also my number. <laughs> hey Austin, he's cheating. He's cheating, Austin. <laughs> That's also my number. Thirty-eight seventeen. We we have the same brain cell, Austin. I don't know what to tell you. We share the same brain cell. Yeah, we talked Saturday. If you told me what the, I think I did tell you on Saturday that I thought that Ohio State was going to crush the spread. Um, I did. And you said it'd be worse. It'll be worse than 38 to 17. Huh. I guess I've all of my week of researching Oregon made me back down off of that saying 38 to 17, it'll be worse than that. But, oh, well, that's fine. I'm a, I'm allowed to change my mind. Kyle, you're, right. you're lambasting Austin and I's prediction of 38 to 17. Yeah. It's you're going to be more pessimistic than what do you have? I am. Yeah, I have. I have Ohio State winning. I have Ohio State 27, Oregon 24. 
I'm sorry. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be a very, very close game. I'm going to say this right now. I'm going to say this right now. Oregon's not scoring over twenty. Not happening. I felt like I was very generous with my seventeen. I feel like I was very generous giving them seventeen points. If I'm wrong, I, I, I just think just if my or, prediction Oregon's... is wrong, it is because Ohio State will score mm-hmm. less, not that o- Oregon will score more. And my my reasoning for my reasoning for that is is just you're going into the most hostile environment to date and all regular season that Ohio State's going to go up against here. Um, it's a prime prime time game here. Uh, the I mean Oregon's offense is no joke. Like for for you to say that oh, 17 points is generous, like that's kind of you're, you're kind of downplaying how great Oregon's offense is. And I was saying Ohio State's defense is outstanding. 100 percent I agree with that. But it's man, if, if they can if they can get them seven, hold them to 17 points, I'm I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. Ohio yeah. State how Ohio State fans should be jumping up and down, yelling in the streets, celebrating. Um, to keep them with 17 points here. I agree. But or- Oregon, Oregon's offense is just, I just think too good to give them that little, little points there. Spikes. So I, I think, I think, it, I think it's going to be, cl- I think it's going to be close. Spike says, so 10 in the first quarter and seven against the backups. Honestly, yes. I mean, maybe not the backups. I don't know if the backups get in on this game, but maybe against the defense late when the defense isn't maybe going at a hundred percent garbage time. Yeah. Just garbage time regardless. But yeah, yeah. it'll be, it'll be something, it'll be something like 14 all at halftime, something like that. And then Ohio state, like they have been all year breaks it open in the third quarter and Oregon make, makes it a close game later, yeah. later in the game, fourth quarter, but Ohio state holds out. Defense holds out to to win the game. Yeah, Austin says 14-10 at half. Once again, I agree. I think that I think 14 to 10 at half mm-hmm. uh, to steal what Spike says sounds right. And then yeah. Ohio State breaks it open later. Because while I think from a starting standpoint, Oregon's roster is very comparable to ours, we're deeper. Ohio State is deeper. The talent yeah. goes beyond the first few players, whereas I don't know if that's the case with Oregon. Mm-hmm. And, and it's uh, worth uh, pointing out, Chip Kelly has been here before. Chip Kelly is a UCLA guy. That is true. He's seen this Oregon team before. So it's not going to be totally foreign for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, before we get into Austin, Austin's over-unders, we're going to go ahead and take our second ad break. Uh, just want to remind everybody to check out the Sloopcast.com for all of your, your links. Uh, wrong one, Jared. Uh, oh, all of your one. links, anything Sloopcast related. Patreon.thesloopcast, Discord.thesloopcast, and YouTube.thesloopcast, and, and much, much more. Really want to emphasize on the Discord part, it's free. It's free if you want if you want a chat board, if you want to hang out with other Ohio State fans, it's free. Uh, you can download it on your phone, you can have it on your laptop, on your tablet. Really easy to to join and join other fellow uh Buckeye fans, Sloop Cats, Jared and I here. Have a good time talking about Buckeyes, talk about whatever you want. It's it's a great community. Again, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh is where you can join that. So we'll go ahead and take our second eye break and be be right back. Austin okay, over unders. Austin's over unders. All right, first one: Howard plus Trey rushes combined together at twenty and a half under. I'm gonna say, ooh, how many rushes does Howard get? Uh, there, I think they're gonna. I think we're gonna see more runs with Howard say four. Say this four. week, and then do the rushes include sacks? Yes, they do. And Oregon can get to the quarterback. 
we could see as many as 10 Howard rushes this game in total, like two sacks, eight runs. I think that's totally plausible. You take 10 Trey rushes on top of that. I don't necessarily see this being like a big James Peoples day, which means that's additional carries split between he and Judd. Um, which is a good number. I'm going to go. It's a deceptively good number because you really just want to say under right away. But I think I'm going to go over. Don't think too hard. It's under. No, nah, I'm going over. All right. That's fine. All right. Um, Botcher, I, I disagree, total. Gangland. I think this is more of a tray game. What's your total tackles? Seven and a half. Uh, that's, that's, that's a, probably an over he's dominating yeah, the, I'm, I'm going to, I'd go over as well. He, yeah, he's absolutely dominating the overall tackles for Oregon's defense right now. I don't even know if we said his name up until this point, I had him up on the board and I had him highlighted. So the YouTube people saw, um, him, Jeffrey Bassa, um, Tui, Ty, Ty, I, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't. The Polynesian names go too hard for Oregon sometimes, but they have three really good linebackers. I tried. Okay. I tried. <laughs> yep. All right. We go, we both go over for that one. Uh, next one here is Gabriel passing yards over under 247 and a half over. Over. Sorry. I, say I did, it again. I did, I've you said it very quickly. Gabriel's passing yards at 247 and a half. I go over because that's that's where Oregon's going to have the most success. I think Hussey's going to do a good job of of stopping the run, stopping uh, Jordan James from from making plays, and they're going to have to pass, get the ball out to to Tez, to Holden, to Ferguson. I yeah, I'll, I'll go over for that two hundred forty seven and a half. I'm going to go under. I think Ohio State's going to have a really good defensive day. All right. I I, I really think Knowles has been holding back a lot for this game. I think there's... I, I hope so. I think I there's a so. lot of wrinkles in this defense that we have not seen yet. All right. Uh, Ohio State sacks and forced fumbles at 3.01. Sacks I'll and forced fumbles. I'm Oh God, I'll go under. I'll go under. Like that's us. Um, Oregon's offensive line is really good, guys. They're really good, and they they're doing really well recently here. So that's that's a, that's a big number. I'll I'll go under. I mean, yes, if you get a if you get a strip sack, yeah, that's two right there. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I. He gets yeah exactly Z spikes. Gabriel gets rid of the ball really quick. So I. I'll go under. Yeah, we've been, it's we've been averaging. We've been averaging four sacks per week. He, he, yeah, but th this is a whole new level. This is a whole new level. As Kyle pointed out, Gabriel hasn't been sacked in the last three weeks, and that's been against like not bad competition. Uh, Oregon State, UCLA, Michigan State. That being said, Michigan State, despite not getting any sacks in that game. Put a ton of hits on Gabriel. I, I'm going to go over on this one. Okay. I just got a team Jared from, from Austin. Tossing that out there. Wow. <laughs> it has come to this. I listen, I, I like, I like Oregon. They're not getting out of this game without a sack. I know they haven't given up a sack the last three weeks. Michigan State got close a bunch. A bunch. Uh, Ohio State is just that much better, and I don't think they'll just get close. I think they'll actually get some of those sacks. Mm -hmm. And I, I think Gabriel also sometimes has a tendency to try to make things happen, which is good when it happens, but also can increase sack numbers. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. Um, 
Next up here, we have Jordan James and Quinshawn Judkins rushing yards at 210 and a half. So under. Yeah, under. Just just, just, I'm going just under. You can't My that, that, that feels like that, that yeah. feels like cheating to include running backs from two separate teams. Well, that's fair, Austin. All right. Uh, next one we have Tate Smith and Ibuka catches combined at 15 and a half. Over. My one concern with this is that we don't know the health of Tate. So, even, so let's just assume Tate doesn't play. You would then need a Mecca and Smith to get eight apiece, which is a lot. That's the fun part. That's part of the fun. Yeah, I know. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm going to go over because I think Tate will play. He was he wasn't out last week. He was questionable, then didn't play, no. which makes me think he'll be available this week. So, but it's a big gamble. It's a big gamble, I think. I also think this is a ground and pound game. I might be talking myself out mm -hmm. of this. I'm actually I'm going to go under. I'm going under. I talked myself out of it under. Interesting, though, Jared, you were saying that Michigan State got to Gabriel, hit him a lot. According to the final stats of that Michigan State-Oregon game, zero quarterback hurries. I don't. Hurry is so subjective. How many hits? How many okay. knockdowns? Are, are those in there? No, you don't really find those as um, as uh, in, in actual like stats and all that. There might be somewhere else, but what I pull up, it doesn't have that. All right. And the last one here we have is Styles and Ransom Tackles combined at 11 and a half, but every sack um, by either counts as three tackles. Okay. Uh, um, um, Over. I'm, what was just, 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 just the tackle part. Say just the tackle part again. Oh, it's minus Every three sound, tackles. He minus says minus three, three what, tackles. What, I was about to what, say, what I thought the of, over I thought the over was given just by the tackles alone. They're not gonna I don't think either one's really gonna get a sack here. So I'm I'm gonna uh, go over just on the pure tackles. What if they do? Because I'm going I'm gonna Sty go over. Styles blitzed a lot last week. I'm still going to go over, but that's, that's tough. That's tough. Yep. All right. All right. Ooh. And that is awesome. Oh, that is God. That is awesome. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Gangland says styles also could be a quarterback spy in certain situations. God, that's true. All right. That's I'm still going, I'm still going to go over, but ugh. That is that is Austin Overs, and that is another episode of Know Your Enemy. All right. Um, we're running a bit long. So, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Anything in Kyle's Corner? No. Fair nothing, enough. Nothing much. Nothing, nothing much. No. Um, I know. I know there's a lot. There was a lot of. You might want to plug cut, our lot, happenings lot on Saturday. Yeah, a lot of a lot of conversations about a former um, Michigan staff that's saying things and all that, but we'll we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Are you talking about yes. Stallions claiming that he gave signals yes. to Ohio State? Okay, no, no, he didn't give it. No, no, he gave it to someone who gave it to someone who gave it to Ohio State. Cool. Hey, this guy is known to be dishonest and known to yep. hate Ohio State. Why should I believe anything he has to say about anything? Done. Fair Over. Enough. We don't need no further conversation needed on that. Oh, after after the Ohio State game, uh, be sure to uh, check out the Bleacher Report app. Uh, Jared and I will be for a second week in a row. We'll be 
we'll be doing a live reaction of the Ohio State and Oregon game on the Bleacher Report well, not, app. So if you Kyle, not live, not a live reaction to the game. A, well, after after re, reaction to the game. Yeah, it's li, yeah live react, react makes game. it sound like we're watching okay, it okay. live. Yeah, re, reaction react instant to reaction the game. post game. Yes, yes, we we do it live. Yeah, we will be. Uh, it so, will be live. We'll be yeah. live. It will be live. Yeah. Come check us out. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't downloaded the app, um, go ahead and do so. Um, I think you have to subscribe to the, like be like follow Ohio state football or something like that. Yeah. Um, something then, like that. Um, we'll, we'll send up, we'll send up messages. Um, uh, follow us on discord. We will, we will let you know when it's immediately going live and give you all those lovely links. Uh, yeah, come join out. It was, it was, uh, I think it was pretty good success. We had a, we had a pretty good interaction, uh, last week. So yeah. Come, come check us out after the, the Ohio State Oregon game. Yep. All right. That's it. That's the end of the show. Tonight's ending music uh, brought to you by Columbus based band called Playing Two Vapors. Playing to Vapors will be ending today's show. So, uh, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, virtual local podcasters. Once again, these are Playing to Vapors. <laughs>